Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush. Today we're going to be reviewing one of the best tier 6 platforms in the game, the Peasant Hellcat. With the advent of the tier 7 Super Hellcat, I thought I'd give this thing a review for people who don't have the Super Hellcat. And anyways, I think it's one of the better tier 7 or tier 6 vehicles to play currently. It's so good at carrying. So, the Hellcat, for those of you who don't know, is one of the oldest vehicles in the game. It's been around for forever and it used to be the tier 6 stat patterns vehicle of choice, along with the Cromwell. Now, the Hellcat got nerfed really hard along with like the kv1s and a brother on and a bunch of other tier 6 stat pattern vehicles, and to be honest, I think what happened is public perception of the Hellcat got nerfed harder than the vehicle was actually nerfed. So, the Hellcat, basically, the main thing that's wrong about this vehicle, and this is the only problem, is its accuracy on the move. It's got absolutely horrendous gun dispersion when you're moving, but it's really easy to mitigate, and I'll show you that in-game. But basically, the Hellcat, everyone knows, 240 alpha, 160 standard pen. I think one of the strongest assets of this vehicle is its accuracy, and it's gold pen. So this vehicle has 263, 243 gold pen, which is enough to pen tier 9 vehicles, even tier 10 vehicles, and uh, 160 AP pen. So what happens is if you're a standard player, the Hellcat's a very viable tank to have some really wicked games from, because you don't need, like, it's a tank destroyer with a turret. You don't need a lot of gold ammo anyways, and it's got, you know, 100, if you need it, it's got 240 gold pen. So you don't need a lot of gold ammo. You're not going to miss a lot of gold shells trying to hit someone's weak spot with the 0.32 accuracy. So the main strength about this vehicle is its gun and its mobility. We're going to talk about the armor in a sec. One thing I've noticed when I've been playing this vehicle, if you bring this thing out into pubs, you're going to get focused by Artie. And I think part of the reason for that is this is my European account. I've got like 2,000 games and people are like, oh, there's a Unicom stat pattern in the Hellcat. I have to kill him. I want to pen the Hellcat. And I think that happens frequently and that's kind of where the camo comes in. This vehicle and the camo and the mobility. This vehicle, what you need to do to play this vehicle well is you need to rely on its top speed and the fact that it's super friggin mobile it's got 22 horse specific horsepower uh, and the top speed of 72 so you can just cruise at 60 kilometers an hour around the map and you can use the 40 percent camo with a camo net and you know camo paint and that really allows you to avoid the arty that's going to be focusing you down and i think that's one of the main takeaways from the stats of this vehicle is with its 13 millimeters of armor it's actually 12 <laughs> with its 12 millimeters of armor you're going to want to be moving around the map a lot because already will just ride your dick for so long otherwise and it's really important so that's the main thing about this vehicle crew you can say i don't have a crew i got repairs because it gets focused by arty so much and i run a rammer some people might run a gld on this vehicle i think the aim time is so quick that it's not needed like i didn't even yeah 1.5 sick it's it's got one of the best aim times in the game probably and so you don't need a gld it's not really going to help very much i run a rammer uh, Camonet and Binox, and that gives me a view range of like 480, so that's the Hellcat in the garage. I'm going to show you how this thing plays. I think it's phenomenal. Let's go play some games. All right, so first thing you need to understand about my reviews is I don't pick like hand-picked replays. What I do is I play a bunch of live games and show you the best ones from the session that I play. So basically you should get an idea of how the tank actually plays not how the tank plays when you're a bunch of, against a bunch of reds and so for this one we're on the map stedzianski now i am a medium tank player so a lot of my play style is really fits to the hellcat what you're going to need to notice though is they've got two arty on the enemy team so on a map like this when they have two arty one of the best positions i think to take you know you have to make sure you're not getting spotted is either c1 or kind of like the k1 angle what happens is it no most people don't know about this but if you play in k1 you get shots all the way down here and you can even move up to about here like not necessarily the houses but about here and that gives you great shots on the people in the south and so from my perspective what i love to do in a hellcat like on this map is i'll love to just go to k1 k2 and i'll take early shots from there and then from there you can actually move to c1 and by that time you know you're the thing is you're fast enough to do this right you wouldn't do this in like a slow tank destroyer but if you start off in k2 move over to k1 that means you get shots on both sides of the, of the map, and if you got spotted in K2, you, like, Artie's never gonna hit you, because they're gonna be looking in the south for you anyways. So, that's the uh, that's the rough idea. Now, looking at this team, <laughs> you'd think it was Saturday, holy shit. We've got a bunch of people who are lined up here. I guess this is standard for Tier 6. Can't really say much. And there's a bush about here. If I recall, this is where I like to sit. Did they change the trees? They might have. But basically, I sit just so much the max view range is out of this bush right here, because that's where a lot of people will sit. I set up my camo net, so there's very low chance of being spotted. And, you know, realistically, the only people who can spot me will YOLO this, and will know they're there. So, 
I wait a couple minutes, and then eventually I'm going to put blind shots into this bush, and what I'll do is I'll go like this so we can see if the impact is behind. And in a couple minutes, when people start getting to this flank, that's when I'll start shooting. All right, so it's been a couple seconds. It actually hasn't been too long. You can see the P-43 is pushing up, so this guy's going to be the one who scouts for me, and I think that's going to probably... If someone's here, he'll shoot at the P-43 and get spotted. So P-43 didn't get spotted and didn't get shot implies no one's in this bush. I would say there's no reason to stay on this flank anymore, and the reason for that is these guys haven't found anyone. If there were enemies on this flank, you know, you'd want to move. And so, a lot of tank destroyer players will be idle for way too long, especially in a tank that doesn't have to be idle. I'm just going to move to C1, and you can see that's going to be really relevant, because all our medium state here gave up A6, and I'm going to want shots as we're losing this side of the map. And so, the vehicle, the Hellcat here, you look at, look at it shooting on the move. It doesn't work. You can't shoot on the move with this vehicle. What you want to do is you want to turn around before you get into a position. That's where your turret comes in. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start getting my turret to look to the left if that makes sense. And then we're going to come up to here, and I'm going to turn my tank so my rear is towards the enemies. And that's going to make it really easy for me to leave if I have to. And this way I can also get shots. And, you know, I'm just making sure the vehicle turns around so slowly that you need to often pre face your tank if that makes sense so here we are we're in a great position these guys will have i mean this is actually really obvious but luckily we were able to move here from the south super quickly and i can get shots in people like this these shots will kind of go in the risk here is that that 52 is going to spot me right so this is a very decent position what's happening here though is we're losing oh hello i don't know i can't believe i have shots there we go, that one goes in. And this is where I'm just going to try to use the DPM of this vehicle. I try to get like a thousand-ish damage per game in this vehicle. And you can see with the Camonet, in this type of situation, this is exactly where you want to be. They're not spotting me, and I can just kind of use my DPM to my advantage. Now this E2 is going to die, and what's going to happen when the E2 dies is I'm going to be the front lines. I would expect these guys are going to push forwards, give me shots, but the problem is people on this ridge... Yeah, that's exactly the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the 50-2. I don't have the gun depression, okay. So that changes everything, right? Like, I can't shoot that 50-2. Artie's going to have to do something. A lot of people get caught up in the protecting Artie aspect of, you know, playing this type of position. The reality is Artie, if they don't get lit, should be able to deal with these guys just fine. Hopefully I don't get sniped by the KB-2 here. And I'm just going to take a revert, uh, farther back position to shoot these guys as they push into my team. So, position like this looks like it'll give me shots in the KV-2. Yes, it does. He's a one-shot. Hopefully this one goes in. You can see this aiming time. It's not... You know, the gun dispersion on this vehicle when you're moving is no problem whatsoever. It's super easy to just stop, aim your shot, and hope that it goes in. I'm going to take a couple shots right here because I expect them to be able to deal with this 50-2. And I don't expect this KV-2 to move, so I'm putting a couple shots. He might have moved. Probably, you know, if three shots didn't kill him, he's probably not there anymore. But if I've got no one better to shoot at... Well, how's my shell cap doing? I think those are worth taking. You know, if I can get that tier 6 heavy out of the fight, that's great. Here's the 50-2, so Artie actually hasn't done anything to him, which is really unfortunate. And you can see our... Dude, how do Artie players not do anything? So, at this point, what I have to do is I have to take cover. And you can see, on the move, it's really rough with this vehicle. Okay, he's gonna go to this side by the looks of it. That one missed. And here, I'm just gonna try not to get circled, to be honest. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to die before I really have the chance to do anything, but I'm getting to this house to try to buy myself some time. That's the ammo rack gone. Mm. And so what I tried to do with the house is even though the house, he can circle around the house, it forces him to take a wider path, and often if it's not a 50-2 circling you, you can deal with it. But, you know, this vehicle struggles when it's getting cir circled, which is not surprising at all with its gun handling and the situation that I was in. I mean, maybe I would have got more damage if I'd hit my shot or maybe played these buildings but you know realistically i did want to win that game and the team kind of crumbled so what can you do <laughs> all right so most youtubers won't show you games like this but i actually think it showed you really well like what the hellcat is capable of i definitely made a mistake i think i could have been in the south in the buildings a bit quicker but realistically like this shows you exactly what the hellcat's good at and what it's bad at it really sucks when it's being circled by lights which isn't surprising at all but some people think it's like a hellcat and it's overpowered and you know the 50-2 has every advantage over me in that fight and so even though i got already and shit i thought it was a great replay we'll go play another to try to give you some realistic 
you know, games in the Hellcat. Now, so I wanted to get into a situation that this tank really isn't designed for, because I can show you how to play this tank all day. The problem is this map is not <laughs> good for a Hellcat at all to play aggressively. Like what you do on typically, if you, if you wanted to play aggressively in a Hellcat, the way you do it is you take a position before anyone else arrives. Now this map, if you look at the way it's designed, that really doesn't exist. What you can kind of do is you can go here and put shots out. Um, that's way too risky. Like, it just never works. Because what happens is people who aren't spotted shoot at you. And, you know, you're not shooting at, like, a heavy tank who's slow into position. You can shoot him while he's driving there. So, this map, not a map where you could actually get away with playing aggressively in the Hellcat. But I can show you how this thing is designed to play. Because you typically just take a position, like, you know, in this area to try to get shots on people. Actually, do I want to try the play that I just said was bad? Yeah, I don't want to sit in the bush shot game. And anyways, by the looks of it, we're going to have to leave this plank, this flank really quickly. So what I'm going to have to do here, I think, just because we have no teammates, is I want to get information. And so I'm going to pop up like so. I'm going to angle my tank to safety because this thing's reverse sucks. And if this Cromwell's aggressive, that's great for me. That would really help me out. But basically, we're going to set up my Binox and Camonet and kind of try to find out if there's anyone cresting this ridge. This bush is going to block a lot of that, which is actually what I want because a light tank cresting that ridge. Oh, hello. So this guy's being aggressive. We've got got our Kamenet set up. I'm going to put one shot into him. Go for the track. I'm glad I did manage to get that. He's down a kit. And this is where we'd leave. So, I got spotted. Hellcat might poke on me. He shouldn't have the gun handling to do it, though. Yeah, he missed. That's good. Okay, so I'm really lucky that that Hellcat missed. But basically, from here, if you look at how my team is uh, <laughs> playing, me being an aggressive Hellcat driver is not, <laughs> not the best choice on this map, because we're all camping in base. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to support the Cromwell B for as long as I can, and I'm going to do that in a position like this, and then for a tank destroyer, easily back here is where I want to be. It's so fucking good. So from here, we have shots. This guy, I know he's in a bad position. He should run away, to be honest. We're just going to try to stay unspotted. And with the camo net, I would feel comfortable sitting in the open if I had to, but I'm going to try not to. So 34, don't have the gun depression, turn my tank a bit, set up the camo net from here. And if he drives into me, he drives into me, we get shots, that'd be great. From here, it's just waiting. So, you know, if I was in like a stronger medium tank or something, I could be way more aggressive. I would never do this play in a turreted tank to stir. And that's why this vehicle is kind of like as good as it is, because you can take a position that's aggressive that most tank destroyers couldn't. And so from here, you know, we should be able to get shots eventually. It's really just a waiting game. Because there's no way we're pushing into this flank with a Hellcat and a Chrome will be. <laughs> oh, I have shots in the Super Hellcat. That sucks. Okay, let's see if we can aim in on time. At that point, I'm just going to take the shot because you can see he was reversing. I expect that Super Hellcat to return. We'll reload soon enough. And this is partly why this gun's so good. Put a shot into the 3045, get the kill. That's exactly what we need. And we're going to try our best to hold this flank off for as long as possible. When the Cromwell B dies, we're in a position to leave. We're going downhill. We don't have to worry about the somewhat slow acceleration of this tank. And from here, this is where the Suka, Super Hellcat's going <laughs> to, the Suka Hellcat is going to push. So I'm just going to watch that. There's nothing else for me to do. Like, I'm not going to try to get shots. Oh, hello. That's another. Dude, Camonet through the fucking bush. <sighs> Jesus. That's so stupid. Okay, he fired so we can get out of here. And this is where <laughs> people like watching me play because these are fucking impossible situations to deal with. So I'm going to sit here. Once again, you can see we were actually able to get a, if You know, if that was a turreted TD, there's no way we would have lived right there. We would still be trying to survive here, you know, because I would have had my tank turning around and it would have slowed down my escape. The Cromwell B dies. Okay, so I'm going to show you where I like to sit on this map to get shots as you've lost the A90. So what you have to do is you have to analyze the 1-2, figure out if you're going to lose that. Now to me, we're not going to lose the 1-2. We've got three tanks and it it's a 50-50. We could win it. We Okay, we're going to lose. Look at the Tiger's position. But, you know, we should have time. And this position right here where this Super Hellcat's really good, but I like to go here, and then I like to move to K5 as we lose. A lot of people never move from this position, and this position's great because it gives you the render distance to, like, see these T50-2 and stuff, but eventually they push in to here and they'll start spotting you, and that's when I like to get into K5. So, Super Hellcat right here, I'm actually just going to camp him because I dislike him intensely. He shot me. That's not a lot. Oh, fuck. We're going to lose the one too. Okay, so, got tanks up the mid. That, I don't know what, what use that is. <laughs> Like, normally I can say, okay, we've got a large group of tanks in a position. That should be okay if we play it correctly. This is not one of those positions. <laughs> we've got the VK in a bush in the field, and I need to do, like, a decent amount of damage to try to make this a good game. So they're going to push in. 
and I'm happy that I'm in this position. I would expect them to start pushing in the one line as well, and, uh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> this is like, this is where my last stand is going to be, so we have to hope that this vehicle is very good. I'm glad, I'm going to try to keep my Binox up to give us as much warning as we can for that side of the map. Okay, this guy's not going to spot me at this range, I've got the camo net, so take that shot just like we needed. Good, he's dead. Okay, this game's starting to turn around. From here, the reason I have the Binox up is because there's going to be tanks pushing in like so, and I can't... You know, that's a problem. So, turn the gun around quickly, and this is where I might actually turn my tank around. The second I shoot, I'm going to turn my tank around, because I think behind me is the only safe play. And you can see, this is why you have to always pre-face your tank. You have to think ahead with this vehicle. It's not like a you know, a grill, <laughs> to be honest. So here we are, VK might push in too. I'd actually expect a lot of their tanks to push in. If we spot them coming through here, that's what I need. So hopefully we get lights. Hopefully the super Hellcat over here doesn't die. It looks like he's doing his best to get himself killed. And this is where you leave. Okay, and the reason for that is this super Hellcat's gonna die. And I want to be, I can't get lit. Look at my HP and look, we need to win this game. So I'm going to try to get up to here. I wonder where this KV-2 and VK are. Okay, now this is definitely an overused position. This is one of the rare situations where I actually think it's a decent play. And the reason it's a decent play is because, like, <laughs> I get shots on J4. So generally speaking, if you lose the south, this is where I think this is a decent play. Other than that, I think it's absolute trash. So let's just put that shot. He's got the rear of his turret towards me, and minus will take it. This VK is pushing in. So moving forwards, I have the gun. One of the great things about this vehicle is the gun depression. The IS-2 is here. Let's try to get that shot. The camo net's set up, so miss that one. I don't think I'm going to get lit. And this is where the camo for this vehicle. It's fucking glorious. Okay, that shot's never gonna go in. IS has fallen back. So I'm careful about moving my gun, and you see I'm doing it very slowly. I can definitely do it way faster. It's just the gun bloom on this vehicle is so bad that if the Super Hellcat poked and I was looking at the IS, I wouldn't be able to snapshot him like a Russian medium or something. So, oh fuck, thank God. I'm glad that shot went in. Here I have to worry about the 30-45 pushing in. The beat, all these guys are one shots, which is exactly what I need. Oh, good. Okay, that lagged a lot, so I wasn't sure that that was going to go in. This guy's probably just going to sit here in a sec. That one missed. That's stupid. I'm worried about the 3045 spotting me. So, where is this guy? Kind of here? Okay, that one missed. He probably just fell back and got safe. Now, 3045 is going to be behind me. I don't care. I'm going to just try to take the shots that I think will win us the game. I'm going to get spotted here. Yeah, I did. That puts the VK back, which is exactly what I need. So once I get unlit, it's going to be soon enough. I think I'm unlit. No, I'm not. Damn. <laughs> I needed a spot. Like, this guy was certainly coming behind me, and, like, everything needed to happen immediately. But still, 1,800 damage. The camo on this vehicle is insane. I think it's phenomenal. Like, the Hellcat's not overpowered but it's kind of like the t67 where if you're a good player really solid platform to get really great games from definitely one of the vehicles that you know if you're struggling for td missions this thing's going to help you with that so the hellcat overall it's a great tank you can see that's 1800 damage <laughs> exactly what the hellcat's designed to do i did like what is that four times my hp something insane yeah roughly three times my hp so really good game in my opinion i think uh you know if you're looking for the hellcat this is roughly how to play it the main takeaways is how much i move around the map and how i point my vehicle in the direction that i want to go and how i use the fact that this thing has a turret to be aggressive so i think it's a really solid vehicle it's one of the best tds tier for tier in the game and if you want i would highly suggest picking one up and uh, yeah go play yours if you have one so thanks for watching if you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and i hope to see you around later guys Bye bye